The U.S. economy added just 194,000 jobs last month, well short of the 500,000 economists expected. But inflation is surging. The rising cost of everyday goods is costing American households an additional $175 a month, and it's crushing small businesses. Gas prices are the highest in seven years. The Biden economy isn't looking too good for the average American right now, and we're waiting to hear what the president has to say about it. Jason, I'd like to start with you on this. In part, I want to get your thoughts on a specific point, which is that, you know, the, the lack of hiring, it's not coming from businesses. Employers are eager to hire. We see hiring signs littered throughout the country on storefronts. But the issue in part is that there are nearly 11 million unfilled jobs, for example, by the end of this July, and it's not for lack of options. What's the issue here, Jason? Yeah. There's no shortage of workers here. They're just not going to work. When you look at a 61% labor participation rate, you have to figure out, well, where is that coming from? It's likely coming from uh, the extended unemployment benefits that lasted through last month. But most importantly, this belief that they're going to continue to get more once they get a plan passed in D.C. You've got cities like Seattle that have pushed through an eviction moratorium through January 15th of next year. So what you have is an administration that's effectively creating a sense of entitlement and not yet giving a good enough reason why we should be getting back to work and building back better. They should just change it, building back better at some point in the future, maybe. We're sort of still trying to figure it out. And obviously, it doesn't help that you're firing people over a vaccine mandate or people are not looking for work because they don't want to be forced into this vaccine mandate. I think all of that is playing a role here. That's right. And those overgeneralized one size fits all solutions that city councils are implementing, like the eviction moratorium you discussed, it ignores the fact that all of the economics are interrelated, that everything affects yep. something else and that there's not some type of tremendous wealth gap between, for example, uh, land landlords and the tenants enough to sustain the economy to withstand something like that. Now, Tommy, Jason brought up vaccine mandates as that is as well a critical nexus point that is leading to a lot of workers leading their jobs or not being able to find a new one that doesn't require that mandate. Yeah, how ridiculous when you have Americans that want to work, that want to contribute to society, that want to have a sense of purpose and achievement, and now they're having to decide between a vaccine that they may not want and unemployment, which is entirely ridiculous. But let's keep in mind that the government created this problem. Let's go back about two years ago when we had the forced closures and the lockdowns, the government deeming who and what was essential and who and what was not. They created that problem. They hurt so many small businesses. They hurt so many Americans that were really struggling to be able to go to work in the first place many wanted to but they were told for the greater good that they needed to stay safer at home and then transition to the reopenings but then you have the increased unemployment benefits and you had so many Americans that became dependent on government that safety net that was supposed to be in place became a hammock and so many got so comfortable in that hammock that they didn't want to return to work I know every single one of you were all in different places across the country but everywhere I live and everywhere I travel I see so many places where restaurants have to close sections because they can't get their waiters and their waitresses to come to work. You've got yeah. extended wait times. You see this at the airport. You see this everywhere you go. But government created this problem, and now government thinks that they're going to step in and solve the problem. Maybe they should let the private sector solve that problem, lift the mandates, the regulations, cut off the unemployment benefits to those who simply don't want to work, and let's get America back to being first and great again. Tommy, I really love how you phrase that as a hammock, because to me, those government programs were created as scaffolding, right? They were to catch the ordinary American, the American laborer, so that they didn't bottom out, but they became instead a hammock on which a lot of people are resting. Harris, you had great conversations last hour on Faulkner Focus about this topic. What were your key takeaways? Oh, thank you. Well, Steve Forbes really brought this home. I mean, we have created now a situation where we can't get out quickly. He said anything we do at this point, it's going to take some time. And that's really sad because our economy is really ready to cook. Like it's it's hot already. Just just put some some you know food in the pan and fry it up. But the problem is we can't seem to do that because we keep taking so many steps away from that pot that we want to fry in. Mm -hmm. And and to, to further that metaphor, you can't eat, okay, if there's no food there. And then you've got all the prices of things like food and and, and gasoline going up. He said, look, even if you were to somehow judge this mandate. 
with vaccines to the point where it were even retroactive. You couldn't hire people fast enough to get the economy back. But I, I want to point out to everybody, we're well over 35 minutes now waiting for the president of the mm -hmm. United States. He was yeah. supposed to be speaking at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. And look, everybody can run late, but when you've got bad news, and Kaylee, you know the messaging and how you handle something like this out of the White House, this is not a day that he can afford to say, I'm not taking any questions. So I hope he's prepared because it, it could get really ugly in terms of reporters leaning in. Yeah. I'm not holding my breath for that, however, <laughs> if, if, if past history is any example, any indicator. Uh, and Kaylee, on that note, however, we see messaging coming out of the White House and the mainstream media that seems to shift around what exactly is the truth behind these statistics. They're saying, look, the unemployment rate that fell to 4.8 percent, they're saying this is a good thing, but it is coming because almost 200,000 workers have left the workforce for good, in part those many, single, many women who are caring for their children because they don't have child care or the schools are being draconian and framing them as terrorists so they're not comfortable having their kids or there's a whole host of reasons but the bottom line is the communications yeah. emanating from the commander-in-chief is trying to shift that yeah it's amazing let me share some facts with you fact number one this jobs report was abysmal that is what we call a fact fact number two the chief of staff in the white house ron Klain, is delusional so too is president biden i have the receipts we'll pull them up here is Ron Klain, the chief of staff in the White House. Here's what he had to say about the jobs report. The jobs numbers are actually pretty good. Quoting the New York Times, I'm sure that was a piece planted by Jen Psaki in the press shop. Uh, tweet number two from the chief of staff this morning as Americans are suffering. The unemployment rate is now down to 4.8% in just eight months. We've created two times more jobs under President Biden in his first nine months than any administration in history. So they're acting like this is good, what we're seeing. And this comes after Biden month after month. We've had these appalling jobs reports. What has the president of the United States told us? It has been the same refrain. In April, my plan is working. In May, my plan is working. In July, my plan is working. June, August, the same words. His refrain is, my plan is working. So is that what we're going to hear from the president of the United States today as he comes out on the Truman-like show uh, set that he's created and he can't do it from the Oval? He needs the teleprompter, so he'll go to that set. Is that what his teleprompter is going to say? This is working? Uh, it's not working. And when you have CNN saying, hey, guys, another disappointment. When you have NPR, jobs growth slows sharply. CNBC comes up short. The Hill way below expectations. When the mainstream media, the liberal media has woken up and said, you got a problem. Guess what, Joe? You've got a problem. You can send your chief of staff out on Twitter, but you've lost the media. You've lost the American people. Only 39 percent like your handling of the economy. I imagine this morning it's far lower than that. Jason, I'll pose Kaylee's question to you as a radio host and a member of the media, as we all are. What are you hearing, for example, there in the West Coast, in these Democrat-led cities? Are they parroting what the president is saying, which is a flat-out denial of reality and saying, assuring us everything is working, even though these statistics say differently? Absolutely. I mean, you keep hearing folks making excuses for what's going on. I'm surrounded by a lot of very liberal people who never want to admit any kind of fault. And what we'll likely hear from President Biden today is the same thing. It's actually still going really, really well. But here's the problem. It's COVID and not enough people are getting vaccinated. And that's why people aren't getting back into the workforce, even though, again, we're firing people who are not going to get vaccinated. I think that's how he's going to do this. He's going to pivot to something that he thinks he's really strong on, which is response to the COVID pandemic. And obviously the polling is not showing that he's doing as well as he might right, think. So right. I think ultimately yeah. it's going to be a failure. I think also that he will probably point to numbers from the beginning of the pandemic, which only bolsters the trend going upwards to pat himself on the back rather than the reality of once the yeah. world opened back up. Yeah. Uh, and finally, Jason, sort of sorry about your Seahawks last night. <laughs> All right, coming up.